Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog. This is a very, very important vlog, so you guys need to stick around for it. It involves a sheriff, Eric, a snake, and the woods. Snakes can be absolutely amazing pets. I mean, for me, I've spent my entire life around them and they have just changed the way I look at the entire world. So I tell you, if you wanna get a pet snake or you're thinking about it, get a pet snake, they can be amazing. But with that said, you have to really think about it. Are you ready for it? And are the people around you ready for it? You've gotta respect them as well. When you get any animal, in particular a reptile, it is very important that you are extremely responsible because you're not only caring for that life, but you also have to take in mind everyone around you and their happiness as well because you never want the animal to suffer because maybe you didn't do your due diligence. I always say that responsible pet ownership is everything, right? I've been doing this for 30 plus years, so I've seen a lot of mistakes that people make. You gotta remember that reptiles, and all animals for that matter, can live a long time. And when you have an animal like, let's say, a tortoise, I mean, this thing's gonna live 150 years. Obviously, I'm not gonna live as long as this guy lives, as long as I'm taking care of him properly. Even the short-lived snakes are 12 to 15 years, and some can live up to 40 years. So you have to take that into account. When you're getting that animal, are you gonna be able to care for that animal for 150 years well maybe you aren't but you know someone else has to so someone's going to be taking care of that animal a long time and if it's a bearded dragon you got 12 to 15 years you got to think about that before you get the animal Why am I bringing all this up? I don't want to preach, you guys. I never want to do that. But I do want these animals and really the broader community of people that love reptiles to always be in a good light. And right now, as we speak, Eric is en route because he got a call about a particular situation that has me pretty amped up. And this clutch actually started to pip out literally a half hour ago when I brought it over. There were no heads picking up. And now all these eggs are getting cut, which is great. That's when I want to cut clutches is when they're almost ready to hatch. This is actually a pinstripe to a fire bee, which is a pastel of fire and a spider. So we could get a bunch of cool stuff. So let's just jump right in and see what kind of things we got going on. First egg. Let's see what we got here. Okay, this one looks like eh, it looks like just a spider ball python, to be honest with you. Oh, you know, it's probably a fire spider. That's right. I was going to say the pattern's a little bit different. That's right. It would be a fire spider. Next egg. Oh, I tell you what. I love this stuff. Oh, okay. This is just a normal fire ball python. So that's kind of strange that we got a little bit of lower rots on some stuff. I tell you what. I'm going to miss egg cutting so much. I mean, we still have a bunch more clutches to cut. But when it's over, I'm going to be so sad. I love it. Let me know in the comments if you guys are enjoying this year. We've had some pretty amazing things hatch out this year. And you guys have kind of followed along right with me. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Looks like we got another. No, this is a pastel, actually. This is weird. Not, not really great odds so far. So, uh, hey, it could get better. We still have six eggs to go. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one that's already pipping. Woo! Ooh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's 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 the all gene animal right there. That is exactly everything you can get. This is a fire spinner blast. So it's a fire, it's a pastel, it's a pinstripe, and it's a spider. Absolutely gorgeous. I tell you what, I'm glad we hit that. At least I feel better that we had one good egg. So we got five eggs to go. Another little fire ball python. So weird we're getting a bunch of single genes when you're mixing all those genes together. But that's just the way it goes. You know, odds work that way. Sometimes they're in your favor and sometimes they're not. Over time, it kind of all works out and it pans out. You guys have known we've had some crazy odds and we've had some not so great odds. So it all kind of works out. This is actually looks like a, just a lemon blast, to be honest with you. If it had fire, it'd be a dragonfly, but that's just a lemon blast. Three eggs to go. Let's go ahead and cut this one over here, see what we got. Well, that's a pretty animal. This is actually a fire spinner. So this is a fire, a pinstripe, and a spider. Absolutely amazing. I see a normal head sticking out of this egg over here, so I'm not expecting anything much other than a normal or a fire. Let's see what we got. No, it's actually a pinstripe, actually. So it was a normal looking head, but it's actually a pinstripe. Nothing else other than a single gene pinstripe. And last egg is a pastel ball python. So again, we hit the one all gene animal. That was pretty awesome. And then some combinations, not the greatest, but that's all right. Absolutely amazing. So uh, again, plenty of egg cutting still coming for the year, but it's been a pretty enjoyable year. I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. Tell me what is up with this ball python. What? I got a call this morning and my friend said, there's a Burmese python at the park. They've just captured a Burmese python. Can you help me out? Can you take it in? I don't want the animal euthanized because no one wants to take it. Long story short, I get a couple pictures. I say, yeah, I think it's a ball python. You know, you can kind of see the head. The pictures look like a ball python. I rushed over to the yeah, like kind of local township hall or whatever. 
and they had it held there. And uh, it was this ball python right here. And it was in a park. It was in a park, but you know, a lot of people think of parks, there's houses around. This is like a park in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere. Oh Someone definitely, definitely dropped the snake off. In my opinion, I don't know, you tell yeah. me, but I feel like well, these snakes don't travel very yeah. far. Well, listen, I mean, a couple things. Number one, I promise you, this is a true story. I don't want anyone to think that I'm clickbaiting you or thinking that I'm telling a story. I promise you that this actually happened. I think it's one of two things. Someone either dropped their pet snake off or it got loose and it crawled out of their house. A snake this size, pretty unlikely that it gets out of someone's house. Doesn't matter, either way, this gives me an opportunity to tell you what I feel about something about this. If you are getting a pet snake, whether it's a garter snake, a python, a boa, whatever it is, number one, be responsible because if it got loose and got out of your house and then was around because again someone thought this was a yeah. Burmese python just like in the Everglades and it turns out it's a ball python so that's terrible number two if you don't want your snake anymore just give it to a pet shop give it to someone that wants it you know put it up on the internet for sale on Facebook marketplace or something like that whatever the case may be the fact is letting that animal go is not only irresponsible and honestly guys pisses me off because it makes us responsible pet owners and reptile keepers look like complete morons, but also it's unfair to the snake. Thank God these guys found this snake and now this snake can be with Eric and actually survive because this snake could have got killed out there. Winter's coming. Winter is coming. It ain't gonna survive the winter time and, and we're in a cold climate. If you're in a warm climate, then it's even worse because it may survive forever and that's ecologically a irresponsible thing to do. I tell you, whoever had the snake, either way, I'm glad I don't know who you are because I don't get emotional about a lot of things, but th this animal suffered because of of you and our hobby and the image of our hobby suffer because of your irresponsible acts. And I'm sorry I'm on my soapbox right now, but I'm gonna be honest with you, there's, there's not many things that make me upset. This makes me upset. And I'm just thankful that this animal is in decent shape. It got in little scuffs here and there. There's a few scuffs here, but overall, I'm sure this wasn't outside like all summer long. It's probably only been a few weeks, maybe a month or something like that. And it's an albino snake. This is crazy. I mean, it really is. Thank you, Eric, for taking care no, of it. No, no problem. I'm glad to have my number. I mean, this is super extremely rare for you know our area or whatever for this to happen but i'm glad they have my number so they don't have to euthanize any animals they can reach out to us and you know i'm gonna end up keeping this animal even if it was a burmese i can take it in quarantine it make sure someone responsible gets it in the end but this is such a beautiful animal who would just throw this away like a piece of trash the little guy said usually they're dumping their trash out there not like beautiful animals like it's insane it's insane it's, it's crazy, crazy. It's well crazy. so anyways guys before you buy any animal not just a reptile be responsible realize it's a responsibility you have to have for that animal's entire life or you have to rehome it somehow so um there it is the story ended well most of them probably don't now there's absolutely no way to know if that albino ball python was let loose by a owner that didn't want it or maybe even someone in their house that didn't want them to have them and to spite them they were like i'm gonna let your snake go or if the snake actually got loose and got out of the house i think it's probably not likely that it got out just from the standpoint that it was miles away from home and ball pythons don't really move much regardless there's no way to ever know the one thing i can say is that burning pythons certainly are an issue down in the everglades we all know it we've seen it in the news and saw that and that, listen there's a lot of invasive animals down there but none as sensational as an 18 foot python roaming where it shouldn't be in the everglades and it certainly is a massive problem down there one day I'll probably do an entire video down in the Everglades talking more about that if you guys want me to. Regardless, my point is we could argue all day long whether they were released by pet owners or they were actually released by Hurricane Andrew. I think most likely the majority of those animals were released by Hurricane Andrew, but I would be remiss if I sat here and said, no, no one has ever released a Burmese python in the Everglades. Of course, it's probably happened and irresponsible pet ownership happens all the time. Not just with reptiles, but when it happens with reptiles, it's a much bigger deal. Hey, if they found a feral cat in those woods we probably aren't talking about that right now but the fact is they found an albino ball python in the woods and by the way when they found it they thought it was a burmese python but regardless i don't blame them you know that's what's in the news burmese pythons in the everglades they thought now burmese pythons were in lake orion the fact is guys whether you're getting a giant snake like a burmese python in my guy snaz here or you're getting a pet corn snake you have to be responsible not only for you not only for the animal not only for your family but for the broader good of the animal welfare community we don't want those black eyes out there and I'm sorry that I'm preaching today but this is a topic that I'm very very passionate about guess what guys what's up I am getting a radical tattoo in a minute here. no what? way 
way. Something crazy. That you guys are never gonna Dude, find the tribal on the face. You guys are gonna find get out. Tribal face Mike Tyson tat. Uh, we'll see. All right, you guys ready? Dude, okay, yeah. I'll be, I'll be back in about two hours, all right? Okay. Sounds good. Right. Lower back, though, right? We'll uh, see. I'm excited. Tramp stamp? Maybe. Let's, we'll see, okay? I'll be okay. back. All right, okay. See you in a bit, guys. Why do you think my dad's gonna get tatted? Dude, honestly, probably like a skull. And there's like an arrow going through it, or like maybe it's like a. I don't think that's gonna. Happen. Maybe it's like a dragon, and there's a knight, and he's stabbing the dragon, and the dragon's leaned over, and it's like, oh, but they're both gonna die. The dragon will die, but then the knight will die because it'll be crushed. We gotta wait and see what this is gonna be. I have no clue. What's up? Yo, what the hell? Reptarium for life, tat. man. Dude, that's oh my Reptarium God. for life. You dude, got Reptarium listen, face tag. Listen, bud, I looks good, but yeah, you might. I mean, at least you're never going to apply for a job. I I'm guess, not going right? to lie. It's a little crooked. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, guys, obviously, it's a temporary tattoo. Uh, we're going to have these tattoos. You can put them on your face, your arm, anything. Sunday at the anniversary for the Reptarium. 12 to 8. Come hang out. Free tattoos. So you guys get face tattoos. Dude, tattoo? and check out Brian's new album on soundcloud Listen yeah soundcloud soundcloud rapper it does, i am it does. <laughs> I'll, I'll put one. little little snake yeah little snake, little snake. <laughs> <laughs> i'll put one on my face too all right good all right face tats for everyone uh come to the reptarium for the anniversary party checking in on the clubbers what hatch today Woo, doggy look at that that is a beautiful clutch here this of course are a bunch of albino nelson's milk snake bred to a head albino so that's why you've got some normal nelson's here that are actually het for albino and then a whole bunch of albinos i tell you that's a good ratio because on average you should get about 50 percent normals and 50 percent albinos and look we got a lot more albinos so uh pretty good day i tell you whoop, 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 whoop. Pretty good day, I tell you what. So let's see what we have here. This is actually, oh, this is actually pretty cool. This was actually a snow bred to a snow scaleless. So all the babies are snows, actually het for diffused as well. So these would be actually snow, het for scaleless and diffused. Really beautiful little babies. Of course, the snows are stuff that's lacking the red pigment and the black pigment known as iridophore and melanin, of course. And they just have these beautiful pink animals like that. Really beautiful to see. I love snow corns. It kind of takes me back to those early days of me breeding when they were really amazing. What do we have here? Oh, we have a whole bunch of apricot Puebla milk snakes. Of course, these are the milk snake that I always think are great starters. And every time I say that, they just chew on me. Honestly, they do tame out. I promise you, they don't stay so crazy like this, but they're absolutely gorgeous. And the thing I like about them is some milk snakes can be a little bit picky when they're babies, but Puebla milk snakes are absolutely monsters when it comes to eating. As you can see, this one is trying to eat my hand. What are you doing, silly monkey? Okay, stop that. Okay. Whew. These guys are crazy. All right, I'm gonna put these in here. Oh, I'm gonna set my camera down because I know there's gonna be snakes all over the place. Okay, make sure no heads are caught in there. Okay, we're good to go. <laughs> Last clutch really quick. This was actually cool. This is an albino Nelson spread to a T positive albino Nelson's. Of course, this is just the normal albino Nelson's here. Basically, you've got that red, yellow, and white. And then of course, ooh, stay in there, buddy. Stay in there, stay in there, stay in there. And then of course, the T positive is where you've got that purplish look to it right there. I mean, what gorgeous animals. And I've told you guys this before, it's allelic. So when you breed a T positive to a normal albino, you get half T positive and half albino right off the rip absolutely gorgeous so i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can't get this lid on before everything oh, nope okay come on come on come on okay good no heads no heads okay good so uh, that's what hash as far as colubra snake some really beautiful snake this is Maisie the corn snake one of the best beginner snakes out there and if you're thinking about getting a snake or a reptile of any sort i encourage it obviously i encourage it i think they're amazing animals personally i think they're one of the best pets in the planet but that's me i'm a little bit biased if you know what i mean but the fact is is if you're deciding to do that there is tons of resources out there people for your education tons of stuff online tons of books there's places like us at the reptile or BHB that you can call and ask questions to. You want to know the length of the animal. You want to know what kind of habitat it needs. You want to know how long it's going to live, what requirements, and hey, you also want to know what happens if I do need to move away and I can't keep this animal anymore. You can always reach out to tons of people, us of course, and we will always help you rehome your animal. Don't ever let, number one, someone in your house to let it go, and number two, you don't think about letting it go because that's just completely irresponsible. Again, think about it. If you had 
a dog and you didn't want it anymore, you're probably not just letting it loose in the backyard, right? So think about it. These animals are the same exact thing. And when people do what we saw today, it hurts everyone. Thankfully, it worked out because they called us. We were able to go get it. No big deal. If this would have made news, it could have made national news or international news. And who knows what might have happened. Maybe some legislation would be passed so that you or me couldn't keep these animals because of one person that made a mistake. I don't want this whole vlog to be a bummer, so I'm going to go ahead and end it on a happy note. Look at the little baby frillies. Look at how absolutely adorable these things are. They're a couple weeks old now and they are thriving. We absolutely love them to death. And you can see they're so habituated. We've been handling them almost every day to keep them super tame. They are going to be just like my guy Nova here. And by the way, we've got like three or four weeks till Nova's next clutch hatches. And we saw him courting today trying to breed again. So who knows how many frillies we're going to produce this year. But these guys are absolutely cute. And even on a day where I'm kind of complaining about people a little bit in this vlog, I, I sometimes can surround myself with cuteness and just smile on the inside. So again, didn't want to be a bummer and a downer today. And I figured I'd end with this absolutely adorable shot of my little frillies. And you guys know that I never want to be a Debbie Downer. You know, I think that keeping reptiles can be one of the most amazing things and life changing for so many people. And if you ever do have a reptile and you don't know what to do because you cannot keep it anymore, please reach out to us. There's Facebook groups. I'll put a link in the description. There's a ton of resources out there. Please don't ever let an animal go because all it does is it's harmful for the animal. It's also harmful for the community. With that being said, uh, Eric has a really cool new albino ball python, everybody. <laughs> if you guys like this video, here's another video I think that you guys will enjoy. I'm going to put a playlist right here if you want to go check that one out. You can subscribe over here and turn those post notifications on. Do me a favor and be kind to someone today and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you